You're on board a 215, one of the original aircraft. This is a Series 5 aircraft. It was probably the last production uh, round engine aircraft ever made in the world. It, it's, it's really a truck. We don't build anything that's, uh, I would say, airliner kind of uh, comfort level. This aircraft is designed to work in high G loads, both positive and negative. We get down in the smoke, we're down in the dirt. It's a very hostile environment. We're at 50 feet, 100 feet, and we're bombing fires in mountains, in valleys. That's the aircraft's forte. This is really an initial attack aircraft. The aircraft itself you're sitting here is uh, an aerial firefighting. It's actually a flying boat or an amphibious aircraft. We land in the water, it takes us about 12 seconds, and we put 1,600 gallons into the tanks itself, and we lift off and drop it on the fire. What happens when you're flying on a fire, you need a toolbox like you do in any other job. You have helicopters, you've got tankers, and you have us, scoopers, and we're the initial attack aircraft that can get on the fire, keep it from growing, and drop a huge amount of water on the fire very quickly. So just a brief description of the aircraft and its systems. Uh, as previously mentioned, uh, the flight engineers nowadays have been replaced by uh, computer boxes. Uh, for this particular vintage of aircraft, not practical. So the flight engineer has to uh, manage all the aircraft systems for, for the uh, pilot. So he controls all the electrical, all the fire control systems, emergency systems, engines, propellers, fuel control and the pilot strictly flies the airplane. On the previous missions for firefighting, for instance, uh, we have standard operating procedures. The pilot will simply call for the uh, flight engineer to maintain 115 knots during the fire operations. The pilot flies the airplane got his head out the window all the time. And as you can well imagine, at low level, you're traveling at 120 knots. You certainly don't want any distraction up there whatsoever. Well, it, it's, uh, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, it's a little bit heavier on the controls. Um, the elevator and the rudder are actually boosted. So they're really not bad. The ailerons are actually aerodynamically uh, assisted, you know, with some freeze type data on. So it doesn't fly bad. When you're sitting in the cockpit, when you walk in, it's a really big cockpit. But sitting up in the seat, you know, with the pilot and the co-pilot and the panel, you don't realize how big the airplane is. And, and granted, you know, it's kind of slow and, uh, uh, you know, a little bit heavy on the controls if you try and rack it around. But, uh, but basically, I think it flies like it should and uh, it's a grand old lady and I can't believe they're still flying it.